Hello everyone, John Stringer here, and I am excited to bring to you an episode with my dear friend and collaborating partner, Brian Pergrossi, who I've been an accountability partner with for quite some time now. We've host, co-hosted and created events and retreats together, the Big Glow Retreat, his brand, in fact. We participated for years in, Kathy and I, and he partnered with me to co-interview an amazing teacher whom I hope you're already familiar with, but you'll find out more watching the episode. For check it out, it's before I cut my locks off, uh, but didn't get to edit it and present it until now. Check it out and I hope you enjoy. So welcome everyone. My name is John Stringer and would love each of you to introduce yourselves. I'll say a quick uh, line of my roles in life currently that are expanding. I'm a life teacher, healer, singer, and lover. And I'll turn it over to Brian Pergrossi and then uh, yeah, if you could introduce yourself. Well, I'll agree that I'm also a lover uh, and a healer. My name is Brian Pergrossi, also a life coach, author of a couple books, The Big Low and The Wild The Now, support people with um, meditation and mindfulness and dropping deeper into the presence and in order to do so to realize who they really are and, and why they're here. Grateful to be here with all with all of you. Excellent. And brother Ishmael. I am a universal citizen. I come from Africa and nature is my teacher. So from the wisdom of nature, I've set myself to free the soul of humanity, liberating the will of humanity from servitude of the senses to bear the essential double person in all. Simply put, awakening humanity to their divinity. That's what I'm here for. Beautiful. And your brother Shmuel, I'd love to start with uh, exactly what you said, nature. <laughs> so I've had a little bit of experience as well as Brian. We've been involved in some wonderful work together, working with the elements and learning from the elements. Uh, water, fire, air, earth, and uh, doing practices and rituals to learn and expand. I realized for me, I seem to uh, have started with the tip of the iceberg, and I know there's so much more <laughs> that, that I like. I'm I'm learning and practicing these things and learning new things about working with nature, and I I feel uh, what you have to bring. I could probably learn from new ways to work with nature. So can you talk about some of the ways you show people how to do exactly what you talked about with nature? In fact, I have a whole program that runs as a daily program known as the Three Mystical Truths, where I share the three secret truths of nature and how to apply them. Each truth is huge, simple truths, but when you start practicing them, they're very huge. But let me start by saying that in African theology and spiritual practice, there's no God and something. Hmm. The universal creative love, intelligent energy that embodies the wholeness of life is here on earth or expresses itself as life on earth through the elements of fire, water, earth, and air, hmm. founded by the eaters. That's why in African spiritual practices, you see our traditional priests and priestesses going to bless the rivers, going to bless the land, bless the spirit of the air mm. and the spirit of the sun. Without air, you will not be alive. Without water, you will not be alive. These are all aspects of the infinite and not little things. I mean, huge aspects. You see me now. And what you are seeing actually is my body. You don't see me. You don't see my mind. You don't see my feelings. You don't see my sensorial perceptions. Mm. Similarly, when you move and you feel the air, you are feeling the body of the air. You, you are touching the body of the earth. Without my spirit, I cannot live. So how could you contemplate that the air is not a living being? It, has, it is spirit. You don't breathe. The air breathes you. It knows how to breathe you in and out. 
if you, if you like stop yourself from breathing and then it comes and pumps you in and out like a balloon. So that tells you that this thing called air is a living entity. So is the earth, so is the water, and so is the fire that in this bigger body is the, the sun. So basically for us to have respect for life, in my tradition, when a child is born, one of the powerful adjurations to that child is come and respect life. And the, the definition of God in Africa is that whatever gives you life, that's whatever your life depends on that you did not create is God. So come and respect life means come and respect the elements mm. and all of their contents. So that's why you find us having rituals for blessing the elements. And uh, as we go on, maybe we'll share some of the uh, rituals as well as the philosophy behind the ritual of blessing the elements. That's exactly, so <laughs> I want to let Brian chime in next, but that was what I was thinking is, okay, this ritual of blessing, I'm curious how you all do that. So thank you for mentioning that. Brian, but go ahead. Oh, and, no, that's, yeah. that's, that's my question. Yeah, please go ahead. Perfect. With the, <laughs> the ritual and the blessing. Uh, yes, how do you do that? <laughs> there are several ways, infinite ways. And uh, when it comes to nature, Nature uses simple processes to create the complex universe. Similarly, it uses simple laws, simple principles to manage the complex universe. We breathe, and we think that we are just breathing. Like I just shared, you don't actually breathe. Life breathes you. So when you understand the nature of the spirit of the air in your own body, in your relationship, you will come to realize some correlations that will teach you what to do. Whenever you breathe, without breathing, you cannot live. Whenever you are, you breathe, every breath is the gift of the creative love intelligence universe to you. You are receiving. If you keep receiving, you will die. You will mm. have to give back. So you breathe out. We take this as mechanical, but there's a huge spiritual dimension behind it. And you can practice what I'm going to share as an example for you to see how it works. For example, if you're having some pain or discomfort in the body, I don't say don't go to the hospital. But many times you can shift this by simply being still for just two minutes. And every breath coming intentionally know what that breath is for. This breath that I'm receiving in the next two minutes, each breath is the frequency of joy. What does joy feel like? Begin to feel joy so that you know that I'm receiving the breath of joy, and next breath is the breath of joy. So you are actually connecting to a frequency of joy in the universe and receiving it with every breath. My every hour breath will be a frequency of wisdom. So you are actually donating, as you see in nature, you're in your in-breath, you are receiving oxygen, donated to you by the plants. And with your out-breath, you are donating carbon dioxide. So nature has planned that your every in-breath must be a gift of the universe. And your every out-breath must be a specific gift that you are also given. When you start your day in just about two minutes of doing this, your energy is very strong. Sometimes you meet with vampire people, you chat with them for 10 minutes and you feel very tired thereafter. And that will not happen if you've done this in the morning. And if you're having pain in the body and you take the breath of joy and you release a breath of wisdom to that pain for just two minutes, you notice it's shifting. I've done it for many people and it sounds sometimes like magic to, to them. But there's something magical about it. So life then is a serious business, serious, joyful business of relating with this with the, the elements. So this one simple practice, and when you're doing the three miscar truths, we teach it and we show you this exact process to do it. So your day is very strong. If you know, for example, 
muzzle testing techniques, you can use it to, to test it. And you'll notice how high this is. I mean, the vibration, the energy you get from the universe is very high. When you finish, it's like, for the rest of the day, life is reaching you with wisdom, idea. The only future you can be confident of is the one you create. So if I give breaths of wisdom to the spirit of the air today, then that's the day I'm going into. And when, for example, you want to do it for somebody, then you dedicate that wisdom. That's, so you speak your word to the, the element, and every out-breath that comes from me is released to brine. It becomes the breath at the tip of of his nostrils that he breathes to the bones of his bones, to the flesh of his flesh. It connects him to his ancestors, and he becomes the embodiment of this wisdom. Hmm. Now I sit for two minutes, and what I'm releasing is going to rhyme. So that's how you, you transmit the energy to somebody else. Hmm. I love that. Thank you so much. That that so I'm practicing. When you are drinking you... water, go ahead. Oh, you yes. just take water and, and drink. Mm. And I hold it in both hands. Now I'm bringing the amuletic and the talismanic. Sorry, my we we all have what we call amuletic or uh, destructive energy, and then the creative energy. And you need both for life to to work. Mm. When you go to the bathroom, you are practicing amuletic energy. You are releasing. When you are at the at the dining table. You are practicing talismanic energy. You are bringing in energy. There is always releasing of energy, and then bringing in of energy. Now, and these energies flow also through your your palm. So when you hold your water this way, it shows reverence to the water. If I were to pour this what this breath that I just shared into this water, the energy change changes. And when I give it to people to drink, so I, we do what we call healing water for people. Various types of healing water. And that's all you do. Normally, when we are doing strong energies, we do about at least one, 144 breaths. 12 is the number of wholeness. So wholeness in whole wholeness makes 144. Allegorically, the Bible says 144,000 people will go to heaven. You need 144 energy to mm. make it very potent. You are doing for somebody. And 144 takes about 12 minutes. And in in, just so I understand, with the water, you're breathing into the water? Is that what yes. you meant? Okay. Not necessarily cool. breathing. But once you hold it in both hands, you are releasing the energy. And your, your, your focus is on it. It will go into it naturally. And once you're holding it even this way, you are, you, you are having both the amuletic and the talismanic energies. When male, female meet, there is creativity. So when these two meet now, over here is creative energy. Hmm. What do I want to, to create? What I want to create is what I'm releasing into, into it. Whether it be a wound healing energy, or whether it be a disease healing energy, or whether it be you know, wisdom to inspire some, so somebody. So you can create motivational energy, inspirational energy, and whatever. And all there is is for you to know that your in-breath is a gift of the universe. And you have the right to determine which frequency of the gift of the universe you are needing to embody. That's your, that's what we do in present time. Beautiful, beautiful. So intuitively, I've been working with water specifically, and intuitively I've been doing a, something like that, except instead of holding the water, I put the water down and I hold my hands near it, and I'm literally just doing this blessing and will be guided to like, like whatever comes through, and then I'll receive as well. So it's funny that you talked about giving and receiving because then I'll listen and ask what messages to, to receive and then I'll write those down. So I love what you just offered us. I'm gonna practice that. Just wanna make sure I got it clear. So with intention, I can basically bless the water by holding it the way you mentioned and bringing through whatever that intention is. But you mentioned the 144, I'm still not clear on. So am I doing that for uh, 144 times? How does that work? I don't understand. <clears throat> um, 
Let me see whether I, I am carrying any of them today. And okay. I may not carry that bag today, but I normally carry my prayer beads. So mm. I have the prayer beads. Okay. Uh, that I, I used to, to, to count my breaths. Right? Ah. So you can have your prayer beads too. And then you know that you are consciously receiving. So a breath in is one count. Excuse ah. me, I really. Mm -hmm. So that's my prayer beads. So I know that. So with one in, in, in breath, In the intention, then I release. Similarly to, okay. so about 20 minutes would have finished, 12 to 20 minutes, depending on how fast you are breathing. But I'll, I normally recommend very slow and even. So you have seven seconds in breath, seven seconds holding, seven seconds release. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Love that. Okay. Minutes. That clarifies. So what, for so something for yourself, when you are just okay. going out in the, in the morning, two minutes is just enough. When you yeah. are building an energy for somebody or that anyone who shall drink of this water will come to that frequency, then you need to impregnate it with a minimum of 144 breaths. And we have some that um, my disciples do for 1,440 or and so on. Beautiful. We saw one before 12 in 12 and 12. Excellent. And we hold it. So I was just listening to a, uh, a recording last night, flying back to Atlanta, talking about 12 and the importance of 12 and how it's, uh, there's some sort of principle that everything builds on 12. So it's interesting that you mentioned that, the 1440 and the, and the 144. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So no, that's connected. Also, Brian, just so you know, Brian facilitates breathwork sessions. I've been to multiple of them um, where we practice breathing and have wonderful ex healing experiences. And that's kind of something I'd like to talk about and offer to the circle. Um, what I've been doing, what I just came back from doing is facilitating healing through looking at history and looking at um, kind of U.S. history, for example, but then to break it down into this identity of separation that caused, or identity of separation and identification with separation that is acting out in all these different ways, whether it's racism, whether it's oppression, whether it's superiority or inferiority, all those different aspects seems the root cause being the separation and helping us see them helping us bring presence to them in, in uh, similar to what you were just describing, but I call it aligning with the source, expanding our awareness, accessing this higher intelligence that removes the blocks, that corrects the consciousness and helps us shift and remember who we really are. Um, so we were doing that work with history and I found what's interesting um, is just like uh, the work that I do with, and I get assistance with, to look at some of my past conclusions and misperceptions and these subconscious blocks and quote traumas that come up and I'm able to release and, and reframe my perspective on, that doing that kind of work with others when it comes to history seems to be beneficial for the collective or at least that's what I've been led to do. And I, I'm wondering what you all's experience is. I know Brian, some of it I've seen, but when it comes to that kind of work, I'm sure it's connected to everything you're already talking about. What have you found the value of history being thus far? When you say history, are you talking about the history of the, the individual or of a, a people? Of the collective. And how, how, how have you seen that? Correct. How have you seen that play a part in your work? Collective humanity. Correct. Are you talking about the collective humanity? Um, let me put it this way. 
I'll look at the spiritual history of humanity, how we got it all wrong, and uh, living a life of restrictions, allowing the restrictions to define us. Maybe taking this all the way to the first big, big, big bang. This wonderful creative love intelligence we choose to call life cannot become life to sabotage itself. It cannot. So how come many people are living less than their potential? Mm. You study the psyche of the individual to realize that we have made agreements with our restrictions mm. because we don't understand our restrictions. I have 34 published books. My 18th book is called The Way Forward, which carries the 18 principles of nature. And in that book, I share that the first principle we need to know in life is that life is about pain, P-A-I-N. We actually begged the divine for pain. Many people will not take it easy when I say life is about pain. When you were born, your big head passing through the narrow canal was painful. <laughs> so your life started with pain. But pain is not about you. Pain is about the activation and free expression of your innate potentials. The only way the light can display its spectrum is when it passes through the restrictions of the prism. Hmm. So the prism is the necessary resistance for the light to break out the spectrum of its abilities. Our pains are the necessary resistance for us to break out our innate qualities. For many people, however, when they meet with pain, they define themselves by the pain and they curse themselves by the pain. If that lady were to tell you, I don't want you in relationship, then you come to yourself that because I'm not handsome, I'm not good enough. Those are the agreements you are making with your, yourself. She didn't say so. Probably she didn't feel worthy of you. And similarly, a guy may leave a lady and then the lady start thinking, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. I'm, those are the agreements you are making. Those are the cases you are now imposing on yourselves. And nobody can free you except yourself. Maybe he didn't feel worthy of, of you. So life is about pain from birth to age 18, you've gone through almost every pain. You've lied and been lied about. You've cheated and been cheated. You have fallen. You have hurt yourself. You have raped and been raped mentally, emotionally, and physically. So you've gone through all of this. If after age 18, we keep talking about our pains, it's redundant. But that's what we do. We go on pain competition. So I carry my pains in my pity basket for you to see how much pain I've suffered to compete who has had more pain. But I don't care about your sad story. Life cares only what you make out of your sad story. Life doesn't care about our, our pains. So when we have a right relationship with pain, then when even you are in the pain, you may even ask yourself, what is a beautiful story that is emerging out of this for which I must be grateful? Hmm. You step into gratitude, you step into what duty may happen out of this, and you don't need to know it. But the truth is, every success story we have read is full of pain. Every terrible story you have read is full of pain. Hmm. Just yesterday, a young man in the church going through some difficulties and asked him, why haven't you come for us to discuss it? He said, Daddy, I've watched the documentary, I have a documentary on my web, website, Conscious Humanity and the Theory Mission. Yes, I did the documentary as part of my 70th birthday celebration. Beautiful. I watched your, your documentary and you watched from Roman Ridge to Accra Academy, a journey of about 10 miles to school every day. So I'm inspired that no matter what I'm going through, I can make something out of it. So instead of rushing to you or so on, I'm, I'm praying and asking what solutions can I have? You've taught us these things. So I started to pra practice them. 
and he's now just completed uni. So you see, my story has now become his medicine. So what medicine is your painful story? So instead of allowing the uh, restrictions, the resistance, the obstacle, so make us come up with our inner qualities, we curse ourselves and we describe ourselves by the resistance, by the restriction. And then you are now tied, the giant you are is now restricted and tied with some cotton webs. Hmm. And so the work you're you're helping do is go beyond those restrictions or use those restrictions to expand and express who we truly are or what we want and, to be or choose to embrace be. them. Got it. And embrace them. Hmm. And I love something Yeshua taught in the Bible. He said, Love your enemies. Hardly do you find people consciously bringing to their conscious awareness that I am love. Feel love. If you've had love for one person before, on my website, I even have that program there called Love Activation. You know, it's, it's now there for free on ethereummission.com. Ethereum is spelled E-T-H-E-R-E-E-N. And uh, if you can feel love, the love you have for your mother, father, child, friend, Romantic, non-romantic love. You can feel that love and then bring to your conscious awareness the pain you're going through. And then from the love you are feeling, pronounce that pain blessed. The pain will begin to change. Mm -hmm. We don't, you see, we run away from pain and the pain you're running away from, you are running into because you're focusing on it. Instead, meet it and consciously do what Yeshua taught Bless your enemies. If you could regard the pain as an enemy, bless it. Blessing is the re release of positive energy from a source to a target. Mm -hmm. So now when, when I feel the positive energy of love, as just as, just as the love I had for my daughter, my son, my friend, and I can feel that love for just a minute, and I speak from that place, that love I'm feeling connects me to the love frequency in the, in the universe to bless this pain and name its ev evolution. So I can determine the evolution of the pain I'm going through. Speak, determine, tell the energy of the pain what it must evolve into. But you can't do it from the place of pain. You have to do it from the place of love, joy. Has there, have you been happy before? Was there an event when your, your team won? Then bring yourself to the moment when your team won. Feel that joy. And then from that joy, speak and tell that pain what it must evolve into. This is what you are now. You, you're causing me great distress in this and that and that way. That's why you are, you are evolving into this and that for me. You are evolving as energy of purification that purifies my pathways of financial blocks so that I will see every financial opportunity, seize it, use it to advance my financial life for the enhancement of the evolution of humanity. Now I've determined the outcome of the pain I'm going through. Hmm. Love that. We don't know how to use these four forces. Life is energy vibrating at varying frequencies and we need to know how to work with the energies. In African theology, your whole body is regarded as energy and you have to identify 72 organs in your body and bless each organ for a particular function in your life. Mm. What must the spirit of your nose do? What does the spirit of your heart do? What about the spirit of your right hand? Have you made time to tell the right hand that when you shake anybody, what it must, what must happen to the person and to you? We haven't. Because in Africa, we believe everything here is energy. You can and assign them specific duties. And normally when we are, we are doing that, you know, women see their menses every 20 days. The moon goes around the earth every 20, 20 days. So when you are doing things like this, you want a woman to do it for a minimum 28 days, right? And a man needs an extra day to, to catch up. So men have to do it to 29 days. Hmm. Ideally, tell them to do it for 30 days. Hmm. That's, why you, that's why you find these things in African theory 
uh, theology and practices, doing it for 20 days. And uh, when when it when it is something that you want to embody for the rest of your life, you are sure. Then you do it for 90 days. Every season lasts for 90 days. And there's a day when they change notes. So spring lasts for 90 days. Summer lasts for 90 days. Autumn lasts for 90 days. Winter lasts for 90 days. And in every country, the different seasons are the same. So you have to do things in harmony with nature. Hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Brian, I'm going to turn it over to you, my friend. I know I've been asking all kinds of questions. So what you got, my brother? Well, I really appreciate and uh, love what you're sharing, especially the part about love, love being this transformative power. And um, so there's a question for me about power itself. Um, I think a lot of people that are spiritual, they think of power being a, a bad thing that they, they want to keep at a distance. And then there's kind of a maybe power is like power, power over somebody, having power over somebody, or this person has power over me. I want to fight them, you know. But is there a deeper kind of power that you have come into realization that is not this divisive kind of power? Is, is there a different kind of power that um, you've realized on this spiritual path and that you're sharing with people? <laughs> You can never have power over anyone. Anyone you have power over, you are a slave to the person. Because there's always an upward thrust from that person for his or her free freedom. So if you are ruling over a country or dominating the country, they are always fighting you for their free freedom. So you are a prisoner, in, in effect. And that is not power. Power is not your ability to do acrobatics in the air drop fire on the ground to kill people. That is barbarism. <laughs> that has nothing to do with power. <laughs> right. And you can never rule over anything. You see, he's a ruler who rules himself, not one who rules a nation. So you have to learn how to rule you. Mm -hmm. So, to me, power has nothing to do with having dominion over another person. But having dominion, not even over you but dominion with you. Hmm. Um, tolerance is not your ability to endure the wrongs and the pains of other people. Tolerance is your ability to embrace the pains and the wrongs of other people to expand your love, energy, and frequency. And that gives you true power. So you, become, you are expanding what you are. Whatever you cannot take with you beyond the grave, you never have it. If I rule a nation, I cannot take that with me beyond the grave. It's no more power. I can take the, my expanded love, energy, and frequency with me. That is power. And I have it with me. So I grow with it. I can take the wisdom I have developed from pain with me. I will bring it with me in the next incarnation. That is power. So if you can't take it with you, it's never power. Truly, a time comes, we call it death. And you will realize that nothing in this world is yours, except what you are. What are you? Realization and development of what you are is power. So power is not dominion over another. Um, you know, basically, the human being is run by his or her sen senses, sense of sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. These are powerful forces running our lives. And until we know them, the individual can never be free. Your affirmations will even go wrong until you know your senses. Something is real when you can see, smell, taste, touch, and hear it. So if I can feel love, and I can know the color of the love I'm feeling, the fragrance of the love I'm feeling, the taste, or ascribed sight, color, volume, taste, sound, to the love I'm feeling, it becomes now real for the soul. It's the senses that give you pain most of the time. It's what you see, smell, taste, touch, or hear that offends you. She said this to me, then you are offended. It's what you heard. That's because you have not even educated your spirit of hearing what it must hear from people and how it must hear, hear it. 
I told you that we always name at least 72 organs. And we want them to perform in a particular way. Even you don't have rule over your own senses. How do you hope to rule over somebody else? <laughs> the senses are spiritual forces. They war among themselves. If you like, take the food you enjoy most and begin to eat it. You'll say, yummy, yummy, yummy. At a point, before you swallow, bring it out, look at it, then eat it. When it was in your mouth, you know, <laughs> squeezing the face. When it was in your mouth, spirit of taste said, hmm, hmm, it's yummy. As soon as you brought it out, the spirit of sight said, you can't touch. <laughs> can't we realize these are forces? And we are not even taking charge over the forces of our constitution. We are thinking of dominion over somebody else. Hmm. And even the senses, teachers tell you you have to rule over, over them. You can't. There are huge energies linked with macro frequencies in the universe. You can rule with them, not over them. So hmm. when even you cannot rule over your senses, you have to rule with them, how can you rule over somebody else? or anything else. So we always have power with, not over. Mm. And nobody, therefore, is better than. We are better with one another. We are not better than. So if the musician, the guitarist, plays his organ and earns $50,000 a year, and the singer sings, and she earns $70,000 a year. When the two come together and are they playing, the music is now so beautiful, they earn $500,000 a year. So you see, they become better with one another, not better than one another. And they all deserve to share equally. You don't say, I used to say, to have something, this one, I have to get it. So we need to have this type of spiritual understanding of ourselves, and we can transfer it to life that I can't have rulership over my life and have rulership with my life how much more over somebody else that's all mm -hmm. never work until israel until israel and hamas come to this knowledge the war will continue for a few more centuries mm. beautifully said so that brings me to the um, practice of community. <laughs> um, that is something that I've been practicing and I know Brian has too, in building community, being better with one another. Uh, we found in the US, for example, there's a push in other directions. And what we're hearing, or at least what I'm hearing now is working with others coming together is really what's going to birth new ways of living new ways of being new ways of creating uh, from the cities from the social services uh, to the technology we use uh, it really requires coming together to birth what i what i hear will be in harmony with nature and in harmony with uh, what's possible um, in our evolution from where we've been so I feel like um, the lessons I've been learning lately are trust, to really trust the visions and trust the things that have, have come through where I don't see how it's possible to um, create them through me. Uh, give you a concrete example. One of the visions I've heard um, not long ago was, to build a new university campus in the city here in uh, the southeast and near coastal Georgia or somewhere in that area. And trust has been the thing that I've been working with to know and just be believe and move forward with whatever I can see I can do now. And then I know it's going to take community to manifest it <laughs> like the, the power you talked about. I believe it requires many uh, to manifest that but not knowing the how uh, but only seeing that small part of the what 
I think what I'm learning to practice now is to trust that, uh, to see it as done, to feel it and envision it and see it and get as clear as I can to it being done. And that's really the only step I know right now. And then to let the rest unfold. Um, so just wanted to bring that up when it comes to trust and manifesting the visions that you see. Um, has your process been simply knowing that it will unfold first within and then the steps to ma materialize it on the external will eventually show up for you with whatever visions that you receive? I believe I'm on the same frequency. <clears throat> Often... When we have our visions, we destroy them with how. And, <laughs> and that destroys. You, you, you do not know your thoughts. You cannot predict the thoughts you are going to think five minutes from now. Mm -hmm. How do you hope to see what, how the vision will? The magic of nature is that you must be a mystery to yourself moment by moment. So moment by moment, you are unfolding to the new dimension of you that is exciting you. So we can only trust. So when you capture the vision, the vision is not yours. The vision is from the university. Mm -hmm. You came with a vision. You see, the seed is the mother of the tree. So when I look at the seed, I cannot show the branches and the flowers and the fruits. The seed is the mother of the tree. In the seed, you cannot tell me, oh, this is how this uh, flower will e e evolve. So just be with the seed and allow it to evolve into the tree. You know it will evolve into a, a tree. And you just allow it, it to evolve. Now you want to know which part will give you a light pink flower. And isn't that too much trouble? Right? Dark <laughs> pink flower. No. So when you capture the vision, just hold on to it. If the vision is in alignment with nature, it shall certainly happen. Mm. So, and the rest is for you, like I shared earlier, to know how to use the energies of your soul, the energies of pain, the energies of pleasure. Use them to support the vision. And when you, once you release the energy, that's it. Wait for nature to do the rest. That's what it has always done. Mm. Despite all of our scientific development, we cannot predict exactly how a seed evolved from a seed to a mighty tree. We leave that to nature. Hmm. Love that analogy. And if you want to build com community, principle three in the book, The Way Forward, teaches you that, you see, uh, I love what scriptures say, faith, hope, love. Faith, but the greatest is love. Faith is your ability to manifest your dreams. Hope is your ability to see possibilities that may be manifested. Love is the ability to create community. And scriptures say, love is the greatest. Because humanity is one being. Mm -hmm. Nobody does it alone. Yeah. Everybody needs somebody for something to be done. Yeah. So we need one another. So creating community is a way forward. But one of the problems is that personally we are destroying the possibility of community because we are needing to be understood. You see, um, Bible tells you with all of your getting, get understanding. So we are always needing understanding. Your parents want you to, to need them and uh, to understand them and they want to understand you. This problem about understanding destroys community. We are needing to be understood. Nature did not create anybody to be understood. Nature did not create you to be understood. You don't understand yourself. That's why you cannot predict your thoughts for the next five minutes. You are a mystery. You are a flower that is unfolding and evolving. It must allow you to unfold and evolve and participate in the evolutionary process of nature with you. Needing to be understood, you will never be understood and you will never understand yourself. In needing to be understood, you are not authentic. You are always changing yourself to the perceived opinions of other people. You will never live your life. People have rights to their opinions. They are entitled to their opinions. 
it needed to be understood you always are afraid because you're not sure what they think of, of, uh, of you. You don't understand yourself. How do you hope others will understand? Hmm. There have been many times when you hurt somebody though you didn't intend to. There have been many times when you surprised yourself with something you, you did. You surprise yourself because we did not understand you. <laughs> so when you don't know and understand you, how do you hope others will know and understand you? If somebody understands you today, take it as a gift of the moment and don't use that as a measure for the next moment. Every mm. day is fresh breath. You do not breathe the same air twice. So, mm. speak in nature and release yourself from the need to be understood. Then you'll be authentic and you will love you. Mm. That's how you create community. Community is always broken by, he doesn't understand me. He's not, we always battle about it. Right? Um, Simply that. Once we have community with ourselves, then we can create community with it. Mm. When we are not in community with ourselves, we cannot create community with others. It's yes. always inside us, there's, there's battle. At the outside, we are smiling. But are you smiling genuinely inside with the other person? Mm. <laughs> if not, mm. the synergy is being exchanged. Mm. And suspicion starts rising. So we need to teach the world that third principle of nature. Give yourself from the need to be understood. You are not meant to be understood. Hmm. By a gift that is being un unwrapped, a flower that is unfolding, <laughs> celebrating. Hmm. That's that's because it. These are the principles of nature. Nice. I love that. That's that's different. <laughs> I love that. That's uh, but that makes so that resonates a lot. Um. The whole seeking to be understood and needing to be understood, like I felt that many a times. So yeah, that hits a <laughs> uh, resonates with me. So letting that go can help. Wanting okay. to feel needed. <laughs> yeah, mm, that's good. I love that. To, uh, to me, what it brings up is um, you're speaking a lot about nature, and it feels like mm. one of our primary communities is our community with nature right mm -hmm. and so we try to understand nature through science and these different things and then we try to control nature power over nature right and so it feels like what you're pointing at is really starting with being realizing we are nature right this body is nature and being mm -hmm. in community with nature and we don't need to understand it. Like I woke up this morning and the, the sun was rising over the, the hill, you know, and just like, wow, this is so beautiful. You know, I didn't like, I don't really understand it in a sense, but like, it feels like that's what you're pointing at is just being able to be in community with what's here in the moment and trying to understand it can take us away from that. Right. It can take us away from being in the, the direct community and direct relationship with what's here. Naturally, we, we are coded with a drive for dominion. I love it. Um, I speak sometimes from the, the Bible because I had a Christian origin, though I've gone beyond church. And, and you know, I teach the world African spirituality, what we call the new era of spirituality or organic spirituality. And um, I don't know how humanity got it all wrong. That we can rule over and dominate nature. The Bible said, hmm. and God bless man to be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Five blessings. How many fingers do I have? Five. When I stand as a star, five pointed. So we all have the drive to be in dominion. It's a natural code. What we don't know or understand is that we are not to be in dominion over. We have to be in dominion with. Mm -hmm. We have not been taught that. Even the language we are using has so many flaws. I'm better than, than you. Instead of I'm better with you, like the example I gave with the, the guitarist and the singer. Always in life, we are better with one another and not better than. We did not start in the same house, same moment. 
how could you be better than me? You are not breathing the same air at every time. How could you be better than, than me? Because we are different vibrational beings at all times. So, so how could you be better than me? We can be better with one another as we celebrate our uniqueness and the gifts of our uniqueness and how we can complement ourselves with our uniqueness to bear something more wonderful than our individual uniqueness. That's how we become better with, and then we they have dominion with. And yes, we are seeking to control nature. <laughs> Funny, religion came and told you it will give you a god, a sky god outside of the clouds, and it will give you power so you dominate nature. You have to pray to this god, say affirmations to this god, so he will give you power to dominate nature. What has religion succeeded in doing? It has succeeded in creating Hamas and Israel. Families are breaking. We hate one another based on religious philosophy or persuasions even at the integral family, nucleus families. In Africa, it's very, very pro pronounced. So you belong to this faith and that, that faith, and you are some enemies right away. Religion has divided the world. Today, terrorism is on the increase. Islam versus Christianity. And this, I call it the, the, the poisonous blood of Abraham or they have poisoned the blood of Abraham. But they're all from so-called Abraham, and we find them fighting one another just because of religious persuasion. Right now, you pay more for your airfare because there must be air marshals in the, in the flight in case you are kid kidnapped. So you, you are paying more. Security checks at the airport cost money, so you are paying more for your airfare. And we are suffering because of what? Religion. And then science told you, oh, I'll give you the tools to dominate nature. It gave us, and we created waste, we created plastics, and so on. And now we are talking about waste and nuclear wastes. Ah, <laughs> you better wake up now and realize that we are beings of nature. You don't have a life. It is the life of nature. Nature commands you to eat, and you eat. We call it hunger. Nature commands you to drink, and you drink. We call it thirst. Nature commands you to pee and poo. When nature calls, you have to rush to the bathroom, else you mess up. So we are all beings of nature, controlled, directed, and ruled by nature. We better learn how to listen to nature and participate mm -hmm. harmoniously with air. Around 5, 6 p.m., what do you see? Birds are flying to their nests to sleep. Animals, sheep, and cattle are going to their pen to sleep. And at the same time, humans are driving their cars going home toward sleep. We are all obeying the same law of nature. Hmm. And we think we are separate beings from nature. How did we get it wrong? Hmm. How did we get it so wrong to think we are different beings from nature? We eat nature. We breathe nature. We are living by nature. The life we are living is the life of nature that is living itself as us. And we think ourselves separate and apart from nature. That is a huge mistake. Hmm. So the wave can think itself separate from the ocean, but it can never be separate from the ocean. But it's thinking that it is separate, divorces it temporarily from the ocean, and it experiences the isolation and the pains of isolation. That's the hmm. disease of humanity now. Isolation and the pains of isolation. Yes. So you are beings of nature. You are nature in expression. Now we will have to listen to nature. Nature has kept some minerals and some materials deep down in the crust of the earth, meaning they are not to be used lightly. We dig them and we use them the way we like. Wow. Today, human values are taking over. Many values are taking over human values. And human values are taking over spiritual values. And the soul is lost. If it will give me more money, then let me do, do it. I'll destroy the whole forest to get my money. We just keep random destruction. Where are we going, humanity? Where are we going? If nature has kept something deep under the ground and we dig them, yes, we must, we, we must make judicious use. But today, the law of human beings is, if I can afford, I can waste. 
So we have become diseases, wasteful diseases on the planet. Nature will compel us to wake up. When he pressed one of the button called COVID-19, we realized we have to change some ways of living. Who <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> told us we are, we are in power? Nature, that's why I told you from the beginning, in African theology, there's no God in nature. Nature is God. Nature is God. The universal creative love, intelligence, energy that encompasses the whole universe that we choose to call God is God on earth as the air we are breathing, water we drink, the earth we walk on that gives us food, the sun that shines on us. So come and respect us. With our generation, newborn babes, Thank you, Brother Ishmael. Uh, well, you, you are a wealth, wealth of inspiration, um, wisdom, and so grateful to have this time with you. I want to um, close out, if it's okay, um, now that we're approaching that time, with you sharing some of the places, your first your website, and then some of the things you recommended, like the, the you mentioned several books, <laughs> uh, The Way Forward, I know, is, is one definitely, and then the one with the 18 principles. I'd like to link to those uh, once we put this up, since you've mentioned those specifically. So can you tell us, one, your website, other ways people can join in the wisdom, maybe some of the programs you also mentioned, just to recap, and we'll make sure to put links to those as well. Right. Um, the website is Conscious Humanity, one word. Awakening humanity to their divinity. Conscious living, conscious evolution. So our website is called Conscious Humanity. So when you get there, my books, many of them are available also on Amazon as well as uh, uh, some of them are also e-book e um, or will be e-book probably by the middle of this. And depending upon where you're coming from and your, your goal, if I recommend, I always say, start with the way forward, which contains the 18 principles, and then new era of spirituality and inner life mastery. With these three, you should be able to come to a deep balance with life. Basically, the way forward gives you the 18 principles. I've shared principle one and principle three during this conversation. And the others are equally very challenging. When you start, you're likely to fight the, the principles. But when you start reading, you realize this is what nature is saying. Is what nature is doing all along. We've not listened. Um, the, in the new era of spirituality, it's awakening humanity to the truth that this so-called sky god you worship does not exist. <laughs> Whether you worship it in Christianity, in Islam, or whatever, please respect nature. This thing called nature is God. Mm. And this nature has got principles and laws that when you know them and apply yourself to them, Wow, you shape your life easily. For example, you look into nature and you realize that when we breathe, we take in oxygen. In our out breath, we give out carbon dioxide. The plants take the carbon dioxide and they give us oxygen. So what are you saying? Life supports me through the plants and support the plants through me. Life supports and promotes it itself. Um, animals, ruminants, chew the grass. And when they're chewing the grass, to them, they're having great harvests of food. And in their pool, they manure the ground for more greener grass. What do you see? Life is supporting reciprocity. Life supporting and promoting itself through one another. You can, and I can give you maybe 20 more examples, evidences. That tells you, therefore, that there is a spiritual frequency of life supports and promotes itself. This is a law of life. So one of the laws, for example, says life support and promote itself. Life support and promote itself. Then you can apply it. Life support and promote itself as me. Life support and promote itself as me. This is no more an affirmation. It's a declaration of truth. Affirmations are positive things you say, hoping they will happen. Declarations are the truth of nature you discover and embody. 
So this is a truth, now you know. Oh, there's this frequency, this law. You go to the law courts. By knowing the laws and citing them, you win. So you must know the laws of nature. Life supports and promotes itself as me. Life supports and promotes itself as me. Life supports and promotes its business through me and as me. Now I'm directed to my business. And I can similarly direct the same law to my marriage, my relationship, my thinking, my feeling. You are connecting to a frequency. It's a huge frequency. you find all of this in the book, New Era of Spirituality. Right. And there's a course soon coming on the website on the new era of spirituality and cosmic emergence. It's also a course on the website that teaches you that we are not created beings and dumped here. No, we are not created beings. Nobody created you. There's no God that who created you. We are emergent beings. The waves do not, with them waves are not created and put in the ocean. The waves emerge from the ocean with the watery and salty nature of the ocean. And you have emerged from life with all the abilities of nature. So, Look into nature and find how you are constituted. So primarily, I would say get these three books, Inner Life Mastery, The Way Forward, and uh, New Era of Spirituality. And if you can, then join me and for the daily course. It's donation-based. You have to make your own donation every month. Select your donation. And you donate every month for the three empty. It's so mystical. It's wrong to charge. <laughs> it's so high that it would be an insult to my ancestors to charge. So we give an idea of donations, and you select your donation or higher or whatever. And you participate with me as your spiritual workout every morning, depending upon where you, you are. A PS time is 6 a.m. It's 30 minutes every day. And the Replace instantly available. <clears throat> so, the way forward, <clears throat> new era of spirituality, inner life mastery. And if you want a daily program with me, the three mystical truths. Beautiful. That's a daily program. Conscioushumanity.com. Love it. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you on that three mm -hmm. mystical truths daily journey. I want to uh, sample that myself and uh, experience that. And I, I'm so grateful. Again, I believe the timing um, is perfect in my own journey of desiring to expand and go from that tip of the iceberg to go a little further. <laughs> and everything you said today um, helps expand my awareness of working with nature and working with the elements. And I can't wait to uh, 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 explore more and work and work with nature. Thank so thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, you for yes. very much. Thank yeah, you. really appreciate you sharing your wisdom with us. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Many blessings, everyone. And uh, we know that <clears throat> this blessings. time was in, was spent well working with each other. We know that every lesson here is going to be a blessing for someone. So we give thanks. Ashe aho, amen. Amen.